Okay, so we're gonna start today on this video, which is taking apart uh, my time frame 600 speakers and replacing the tweeters on them. Um, first things first, I got a couple tools kind of off to the side here that I'll be grabbing. And I don't know how this video is gonna be structured, if I'm gonna fast forward through the process or whatever. I've never done this before, so we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, I just wanna mention it in advance. I'm in the other part of my basement. That's why, like I said in the intro, you can see wires and pipes hanging down up here and you can see my water heater and my furnace and all that in the background. Uh, my sub pump is down here back in this corner. I don't think you can see it on the video, um, but we've had some rain around here recently and I live down in a valley <laughs> out in the country and we have a creek behind us on our property. So we've had some rain and things here recently. So my sub pump may go off a couple times throughout the video. Um, I don't know if that'll be too distracting or if I'll just kind of mute the audio or whatever. We'll figure that out in the editing. Um, but if you hear the audio drop out or something or just hear it in the background as I'm talking, that noise is my sub pump going off. It goes off quite a bit uh, because of where I live and when we have weather. So first things first these are my well this is actually the right speaker for my time frame 600 speakers and i'm going to start with this one and then we'll see how this goes and see if i do the other one or if i just show one speaker on this video we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear we'll see what happens uh, but these speakers are kind of unique as i said in my home theater intro uh, videos these have two tweeters in the back and then they have some tweeters in the front and the woofer up here um, and they're covered in this more or less a sock style material um, that I already on this one had to restaple up on top uh, because I had to peel it down. And you're going to notice when I do this, uh, as I kind of walk you through the process of doing this, you're probably going to see foam and things kind of fall off. That's just going to be the nature of the age of these speakers and how they're constructed. You could potentially go out and buy a new sleeve, a new sock out of a material that gets fitted uh, to the speaker, but I'm not really planning on doing that. I I don't really see the need in it, especially if I have to get in here to do anything on it, because you have to remove this sock to really get to anything on the, on the uh, speaker. So uh, first things first, the way these speakers are set up, I already started it a little bit here. Um, they have a wood base, both at the bottom and at the top, that are fitted in with some dowels. And I may throw in B-roll footage as I do this, I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll kind of just see here. Um, but you need to take just a little hammer and a piece of wood and kind of get up under the lip. And you need to loosen these top pieces off before you can get to anything. There we go. There we go. And so this little piece with the dowels is just stuck in here at the top, which I may be able to lean it down a little bit so you can see right in there somewhere. And as you can also tell, this is restapled. I'm gonna have to pull these staples out and pull this loose to get this sleeve down, which I'm gonna do here in just a second. Yeah, let's see, we'll probably, probably gonna have to cut here for a second so I can grab another tool to remove these staples. Okay, so we've jumped forward. I cut out all the um, steps of me pulling all the staples out. That It was not too fun doing that. But anyways, I got all them removed and I shouldn't have to do that on the other speaker uh, because this speaker, um, which I've talked about, I believe in my detailed home theater tour when I talked about it and I'll talk about it a little more here. These speakers were sold to me as damaged uh, through a place called the Record Exchange uh, down in St. Louis, uh, Missouri. And they were damaged, supposedly. And this speaker in particular was only getting sound out of the bass. It wasn't producing any sound out of any of the tweeters that were on here. So initially they weren't gonna sell me the speakers, um, but I talked to the owner and convinced him to sell them to me at a clearance price, um, basically because I was buying them as damage. So if I couldn't get them to work, you know, I couldn't bring them back for a return. And, you know, it was kind of a mutual thing between us two that I was buying them like that. And so I had to peel this sleeve down already to get to the back, um, 
with all the connectors and everything because there is a fuse on these speakers that is supposed to protect the tweeters from blowing because I guess these tweeters are very sensitive <laughs> on these model of speakers. And so I went in and I got that all fixed up. I actually didn't even replace the fuse because it's kind of hard to find a fuse to fit this unless you want to find and modify like a, uh, I think it's supposed to be like a fuse for like a car light, like headlight or some, something weird like that. And I didn't want to process or work with the process on that of going through the whole thing and trying to do that. Uh, plus these fuses are like, not really welded, but they're kind of melted on with glue and some different stuff into the box and stuff on here. And I didn't want to try and take them off and damage it. So what I did is I just got some alligator clips and I made a bridge um, on the circuits on there. So on the binding posts and stuff so that it would bypass the fuse and it got everything to work. Now, technically that's not the safest thing to do with these speakers because you could blow the tweeters on them, which some of these tweeters might have already been damaged when I bought them from people not knowing about that when they were testing the speakers out, or maybe that's why they traded them in because they did something, I don't know. So that's why I'm replacing the tweeters today. But anyways, what I was getting to uh, on this, this one was a little bit harder to peel off this sock because I had already taken it down and restapled it up there when I had a mess with uh, the fuses to try and get everything to work. So um, the other speaker, if I show that one on here, should be a lot easier. Uh, it should just be pressed up here and I should be able to just peel it down. It won't have any staples in it. Uh, anyways, so back to what I was talking about. So I got the top taken off, as you can kind of see in here and uh, all the staples are removed. So we're gonna peel the sock down. So anyways, yeah, so this is what it looks like uh, on the front. So this is an inline tweeter, which I'm not 100% sure if I can replace this one or not. Um, I'll have to check on that. We'll kind of find out together on that. Uh, but it has, this is a midwoofer. I guess both of them are midwoofers, but this back here in this inline is a midwoofer that helps produce the mid levels on this speaker. This is the inline tweeter. And then this is the subwoofer or the base woofer on this, not really a subwoofer, but the base woofer. And then on the back, as I spin this around, which we'll start with these, as you can probably see one right here and one right here, these are secondary tweeters that play audio behind to try and like make a diffuse kind of sound that comes out. And we're gonna start with replacing these first. Uh, now with that, these are the ones that I bought to replace them with. Uh, these are from Parts Express. I don't remember the exact model number. I'll probably put it in the description below. Uh, but these, I did some searching on some forums, should fit pretty much, you know, almost exactly into the spot here. Um, we may have to fiddle with the screws a little bit, but these should just kind of snap right into place and they have the same kind of tonality and everything as these ones. So it shouldn't change too much on here. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So first things first, I'm gonna grab my little screwdriver here. And by the way, this is just a neat little Black & Decker power driver. Uh, like automated uh, screwdriver. I got this as, I think, a gift for Christmas from somebody. I don't remember who. And it's neat for doing stuff like this. I'm actually not using the bit that came with it. <laughs> I'm using, uh, this is a member's mark, like from Sam's Club. It's a bit set, driver set. Um, we actually got that because one of my wife's family members lost the actual screwdriver that goes with it. So they were just going to throw out the actual bits. And uh, we decided just to take them to see if we could maybe find secondhand a uh, driver for it. All right, and so now we're going to try and pop this out here with my flathead screwdriver. All right, so I don't know. Maybe I can zoom in on the video when I go to edit this. So here's the old speaker. And I'm just going to pull this bad boy off. And the yellow goes to the red terminal. So I remember, which is this one here. So we're gonna slide this one on. 
just like that. Slide this one on, just like that. And a good rule of thumb, I think most audiophile or computer techie kind of people know, it's always good to do kind of opposite when you're screwing and unscrewing to keep the pressure even. And I'm not trying to drill these in uh, too tight. I just want it to be secure in there. I don't want to damage anything by trying to push it in too far. All right, so there's the first one. Let's just kind of bend these so I can get them on here already. Okay, so there's that one. So we're gonna turn this here. And this one's already missing a screw apparently from beforehand, I don't remember that, but we'll see. Pop this out. Hello. Now this one was put in differently, so I wonder if that could be part of the issue I'm having with these. Okay, so now that one's in there. So now we got both of these put in on this one. And I've got a tablecloth on here. I'm just spinning around making a mess. Let me actually fix that real quick. Now I'm gonna take a look at this one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to replace this one or not, but we're about to find out, let's see. So as you can see, you might be able to see in there, you can see there's another inline and woofer behind it. All right. Okay. <laughs> and this one might be kind of tricky. We're about to find out. It might be tricky, or this one might be the easiest. Yeah, this one looks like it's going to be the e easiest to replace. So that's good. Right. There we go. And that one's in there. Okay, so we got... Here's all the old tweeters, all three of them here that are replaced now. And then we've got all the new ones in here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna cut here for a minute and we'll go grab the other speaker and put it up here and then we'll see about removing those uh, tweeters and getting the new ones put on. So bear with me just a minute. Okay, so we've got the other speaker put on here. So now you're gonna be able to see me um, kind of do this from scratch without starting on here. You'll also notice if you see on the first speaker I had up before I rolled the sleeve, sleeve down, it had a DCM badge up in the corner. Uh, those badges are on there to show 
which side is left and right. So the badge is supposed to go to the inside so that it kind of puts the uh, tweeters and all that stuff since they're not dead center, they're uh, scooted to the left or the right. Uh, it's made so that you can put those to the interior of the speaker. That's how they're supposed to be used according to the manual. Okay, so I've never opened this one up or pulled this down so this should be easier, but like I mentioned before, you want to get just a piece of wood here. Yep, all right. So there's that one. Uh, so now, as you can see on this one, it's just kind of glued on there. There's no staples because I've never re rolled this one down. So this one should be a little bit easier to peel, but you're probably going to see a lot of like random uh, like uh, wood pieces and stuff just kind of probably fly off here because like I said, I don't think this one's probably ever been rolled down before. Okay, so now we're gonna roll this one down. All right, that's as far as we need to go. So yeah, so as, like I said, in the other one, and maybe I'll throw, if I take a picture, I'll throw it in here. Um, these are set to the inside. So this is the left speaker, so this stuff is gonna be on the right hand, you know, aiming to the listening position, and then the other speaker, which was the right hand side, this stuff would have been over here on it. So let's see, we'll take this one off first since we've got the front here. I can just grab another one of my tweeters. And I bought six. I actually thought there was another tweeter on here. So I, I thought I was going to have an, like one less to have to use, but uh, I was wrong <laughs> on my order. So it turned out to be just right, you know, that I had six of these. So let's see. And as I mentioned, I can't remember what I said at the start of all this. Uh, the whole reason I'm doing this is because since these were damaged when I bought them, I'm thinking one, if not multiple, of these tweeters may have already been damaged when I bought them. Um, you know, just from people over driving them or whatever, because the fuse was blown, it then inevitably messed up the tweeters. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's why I'm doing this. And I'm just curious to see what kind of uh, audio difference I see. Or actually, I shouldn't say what I see, what I hear, I guess would be more appropriate there. There we go. And that one's in there. All right. I'll spin these around again. So again, as you can see, there's two on the back here. We're gonna get these as well. You'll also notice on these, <laughs> um, these ones seem to have been glued into the spots uh, along with the foam that was on here. So these are a bit more uh, problematic to take out of the, the body of the speaker <clears throat> just because of that.
All right, so that one's in there. So now we're on to the last one. Just gonna turn this a little bit. Yeah, and as you can see, again, I may be able to zoom in on there. I don't really want to move the camera because I've got it in a good spot. But you can see there's kind of like some uh, adhesive or something that's on here that's on this to kind of keep it in place as well as uh, the sock that's over it. Okay, so I'll pop this one out. So yeah, as you can see, like I said, you can see how it's kind of stuck to the sock that's on here. So you got to kind of peel this off. And I found, as I was mentioning earlier, I found the Parts Express replacement tweeters through a forum. I don't know if it was ABS forum or uh, just like an audio forum of some description. I, I can't remember. But I found and they said that these ones are almost an exact match. Uh, and these are the lower quality ones because you could actually get like a silk dome or mylar dome tweeter or something that's a little bit higher quality than these that sound a little bit different. It changes the sound signature a little bit, um, but are still, you know, similar to what the originals were that people say, but those are a lot more expensive. I think when, when I bought these, if I don't break this one, uh, when I bought these, they were like $6 a piece or something like that. I'll, uh, I'll put in, in the video here what price they actually were. All right. There we go. So now we got them all in there. All right. So yeah, so now the next part's gonna be on both of them, which actually, I'll just grab them real quick so you can see next side by side, potentially. Grab this one right here. And I'll check my phone here to make sure. Yep, you can see it. Uh, so yeah, so see, this is the right speaker with all this to the left and then this is the left speaker with everything to the right so the next thing is going to be i'm gonna have to kind of push all this back in here and before i roll all the sleeves up and mess with all this i'm actually going to hook up i have a small test like stereo thing that i'm going to hook up here and uh, plug these in and make sure they work and they sound correct before i go and roll everything up and staple them on here and mess with everything. So you're going to see another cut real quick and I'm going to have the little test uh, player set up here so I can test these out. Okay, so I tested out uh, these speakers. Everything seems to be working fine. Um, you're not going to hear that just because I was using CDs and uh, I'm sure the music will get a copyright strike on here, so it's kind of pointless. I also do apologize, my water heater decided it was time to heat up while I was down here. Um, so that's the noise in the background, hopefully you can still hear me okay on here. Uh, but yeah, so I tested everything, everything seems to work okay. Uh, I was going to show real quick. This is the little thing I use to test speakers. It's just a little Sony CD player. Uh, this is from 2011. Uh, it originally had speakers that came with it, just small little, you know, real low quality bookshelf speakers. Um, I just basically found this at a Goodwill for a couple dollars and I use it to test speakers out because it has speaker outs on here. It's not a whole lot of watts per channel, so you know, as long as I don't crank it up too high, it hopefully won't blow any speakers. Uh, but it's nice because it's got a CD player as well as uh, a radio on here. And it's got a little audio in plug. So if I have like an iPod or even my phone with an adapter, I could plug it in and test it out that way. So it's just a neat little thing to have here um, that I keep mainly just for testing everything. So uh, you're going to see another quick cut. Uh, real quick on here and hopefully my water heater will stop by then uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put away the little uh, stereo thing here I'm using and then we'll pull the sleeves up and I'll 
start stapling everything on the top on here and then these will be done and be ready to put back in the home theater. Okay, so my water heater is not cooperating here, so we're gonna do as best we can with this. So now in order to get these sleeves kind of pulled back up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch them tight, you know, taunt on here. Make sure they're nice and taut, and then I'm just going to use my little handy stapler and staple these back on top here. All right, so that's not too terrible. I think that'll be manageable. Let me uh, slide this back on here. I think, yeah, I think this will, there's my stuff pump again. Then we want to just tap these down and they don't even have to be too snug on there because you're not really going to pick up from there. You're going to pick up from the body. But yeah, so there you go. So now this one, if I back it up, is all sealed back on. And even on the back, you can see it's, I mean, it sags a little bit up here. I may be able to just, I may even just put a couple more staples just like that to help keep those down. But yeah, so there we go. So now this is all done and all set up. So we'll put this one down. Just staple one right in the middle. Start. All right, so yeah, so here we go. So there, this one's on there. So then again, we'll just find the spots for the dowels in here. And then give them a good little tap. All right, and now they're back on there and here we go. We got this one done. All right. So I guess that's gonna conclude the video here. Uh, so hopefully this isn't too long. We'll see how much I edit out of it and everything. Uh, hopefully to cut this down. I know a lot of my videos run kind of long. Um, but yeah, so that's how to redo the tweeters on these time frame 600 DCM speakers. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, as I say in all my videos, I appreciate all the feedback. I've had a handful of comments on my videos. That's greatly appreciated. I enjoy talking with uh, everyone out there in YouTube land. Um, the subscribers, you know, I've had a handful of those. I think I'm up to like 12 or 13 or they're about somewhere there. Again, that's greatly appreciated. Well more than I uh, thought I would have at this point. And the views, I've had a couple videos over 100 views. My no commentary home theater tour is nearing like 600 views now, which is, again, as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, insane to me that that many people have viewed it. Um, but I appreciate all the support. So, uh, you know, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment down below on this. Like I said, this is the first in a video that I've, or first, first of a video I've done like this. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do more like this or not. It just depends on what I have in the, the home theater or equipment to work on. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I hope you enjoy it and uh, be on the lookout for some more videos. I've been kind of trying to film some stuff all at once and then kind of structure out the releases. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I appreciate everything and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.